What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex here, and you're watching the Rage and Ronin review. In this video, I will be giving you my spoiler filled review for The Mandalorian Season 2. I finally checked it out. I checked it out a little bit over a week ago, and you're probably thinking to yourself, Alex, why are you watching this now? The series came out last month. Well, the main reason why is because I just wanted to start my Disney Plus subscription right on January 1st or January 2nd. I forgot when I actually uh, subscribed to it. But in any case, I wanted to subscribe at the beginning of the year. And also, I wanted to just binge watch it through, which is exactly what I did. I didn't want to wait, you know, every week to watch it. I mean, people don't really like to do that. They just want to watch it all in one shot if the option is available. So I decided to do that. I actually did watch every single episode in one sitting, in one day. It took me five or six hours. And uh, it was great because I couldn't turn it off. I, it was such a great series. It's such a great series. It's like the greatest thing for Star Wars, for the Star Wars franchise. And um, we got to talk about it. So uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about each episode uh, briefly. And then I'm going to give you my overall thoughts. So the first episode is called The Mars Show. It's got Timothy Oliphant. The first thing we see is Timothy Oliphant wearing the Boba Fett armor but it looks a little bit weird on him it's like a it's not the full armor it's it's, it's a combination of the 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 mandalorian armor and some uh, regular clothing and um he needs his help uh mando's help to defeat the uh the crate dragon when i first heard the crate dragon i was thinking to myself hey that sounds familiar i think that's from the this lucas arts game that i used to play called i think it's called dark trooper it's been such a long time uh, it featured the Kray Dragon. I think it was, uh, I think it featured the creature. But in any case, so that's really cool that they're drawing um, content from the video games and the expanded universe. So very, very cool. And this episode was a lot like that episode in season one where um, there's that big rhinoceros looking thing. And then it, it first introduces the, um, the, the, the child using the force. You know what I'm saying? It's it feels like it's just another adventure for the Mandalorian, and it's not really connected to the larger story. But later on, you realize that like this this all is fully connected because, especially since at the end of the episode we see Tamara Morrison. You know that's that's Boba Fett. <laughs> that that's Boba Fett. That's you know you see his um you know he he's the clone right so he's the father of all the the the, the Bobas or you know <laughs> the Boba Fetts. I mean the sorry the uh, the uh, Jangle Fett and the clones. Uh, in any case, um, this was a pretty cool episode. At the beginning of this episode, I was thinking to myself, is this just another disconnected episode where he's just like he he wanders into town and he has to help uh, um, the people there and do something. It was, but it's also, you know, a kind of, um, it's an extension of the character and what he has to go through later on in the future episodes. Anyways, this is a pretty cool episode because it was pretty action-packed when it was time to actually kill the crate Dragon. It was pretty cool. And to top things off, we were watching it streaming at home. It, it went full screen on us. It went full on IMAX at home. It originally had the black bars. This one's directed by John Favreau. It had the black bars to show the widescreen format. Then it expanded when they were about to fight the crate Dragon. I was like, hey, this is cool. You know, this gives you a more grander scope of the, the, the scene, which was really, really awesome. So uh, good episode, but still felt a little bit uh, like a standalone episode. All right. The next episode, episode two, is called The Passenger... And this one's directed by Peyton Reed, who directed Ant-Man. And this one, just like the previous episode, also felt like a standalone episode. But it's part of his journey. He has to bring the frog lady to, um, to her home, to her planet, to meet with her husband. And he's carrying these eggs, which the child keeps on eating. And every time he eats one, I just feel like, oh my god, this is so bad. <laughs> like, stop eating it, kid. And then this spider comes out. The spider is so creepy, by the way. Not only, um, not only was there spiders, but also we see these two X-wing fighters, uh, X-wing uh, uh, um, uh, fighters, and then um, one of the um, I don't watch Kim's Convenience, but I recognize that the the one of the pilots is from the from that uh, hit uh, TV series uh, Kim's Convenience. So that was pretty cool. You know, that's uh, some diversity there, and. Like I said before, this is not one of my favorite episodes. It's, it's, it feels like a standalone episode. I want to see more like like lore, you know what I'm saying? This one isn't that episode. This one's more just like the adventures, the traveling adventures 
that the Mandalorian gets himself into. And it was pretty crazy because I felt that, I thought that the, um, uh, that the, the ship, the, the Eagle Crest was definitely toast. I really thought that the Eagle Crest like was done after it crashed, crash landed on an ice planet. It looked so destroyed, but they were able to make it. So that was pretty cool. And then uh, the next episode, uh, episode three, the Herod, the heiress, that was directed by, by Bryce Dallas Howard. That's when start, things start to pick up because the Mando ends up meeting with the other Mandalorians. And, um, and uh, this one's a lot more action packed because they actually end up in a fight on uh, these, an Imperial um, um, transport. And I got to say something, you know, the fights are really fun to watch. They, you know, watching these uh, Mandalorians go at it with stormtroopers, but stormtroopers really suck. If, if there's any like piece of medium that shows you how stormtroopers really suck, it isn't the original trilogy. It is the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian really gives you a true emphasis on how sucky stormtroopers are. Okay. So they are really, really bad. <laughs> Next episode, The Siege, starring Carl Weathers. Now, this is a pretty cool episode. I like this one. This one, they end up uh, going to um, uh, this planet. Uh, I'm just going to tell you what I, I remember. But uh, what was really cool about it was this big chase sequence involving TIE fighters and their their transport. Their, th this transport that they were on, um, which goes on the ground, and there's like... I think a lava, like molten lava, like the lava's already like frozen. I mean, like solidified for lack of a better term. Um, but then they're being chased by TIE fighters. That was really cool. That was a really, really cool sequence. I really liked that. And then um, it was um, it was kind of a catalyst for bigger things to come to, that were going to happen in the, the later episodes. But I just love the fact that they brought in TIE fighters. So that created a bigger action sequence like a more grand spectacle that one that episode is directed by Carl Weathers next we got the Jedi episode uh, five Dave directed by Dave Filoni and you could tell that this one's from Dave Filoni because it brings in lore from Star Wars uh, uh, Clone Wars because we bring in uh, Rosario Dawson um, who plays Ahsoka Tano the Jedi and when she ignites her lightsabers, they're white, two white lightsabers. And that was super, super cool because we're so used to seeing red, green, blue, purple lightsabers. And then we see these light, uh, white colored lightsabers and you know, that's something different. And to top things off, you see them working together. And finally, we're seeing this bigger story about the child and we're learning more about the child. We learned that his name is Grogu and you know, it, it um, reveals more of, um, you know, more mystery or actually, actually kind of answer some questions about who he really is. And what was great about this episode, for me at least, and like this is a total fanboy moment because I'm a huge fan of him, Michael Bean. Michael Bean shows up in this, this episode. It was great to see him. Like it was great to see him back on the screen again. I can't remember the last time I seen him act um, the, the, in um, a Planet Terror uh, directed by Robert Rodriguez. <laughs> Anyways, it was great to see that. It was also cool to see a Jedi fight in the Mandalorian series because she went up against that, um, that, that, uh, that, uh, the, the leader of that, that, um, uh, that group, that organization, uh, who was actually played by, uh, the, uh, I think it's the daughter of, of, um, the daughter of Don and Osanto, one of Bruce Lee's students. So that was really, really cool. Very, very uh, cool episode. I really liked that. It was just a great um, great story development for the larger story. And then, of course, the introduction of Ahsoka Tano's character. I hope we get to see her again in the next season. Anyways, the next episode is The Tragedy. That one's directed by Robert Rodriguez. This one is where we see Grogu um, uh, kind of harnessing his, uh, his uh, force abilities. Um, I don't know, really know what he was doing there during that meditation, but what was the most exciting part about this was, of course, the introduction introduction of Boba Fett. Right, he he joins the battle. Fennec Shand is back. Uh, she gets uh, I get I guess uh, rebuilt by Boba Fett. So her um, like her she's indebted to him. So that therefore they work together now. But once again, while this is an action-packed episode, 
this is another episode which emphasizes the uselessness of the um of the stormtroopers it, it's just ridiculous how useless they are i wish they would make them that's the only thing that i that i have a problem with in this and that is i wish wish they made them more like the the this first order stormtroopers where they they actually have better aim <laughs> where they actually pose a threat because all they are is just um protagonist fodder you know what i'm saying the protagonist they just like destroy them no problem but what was also really cool is that they um they introduced the dark troopers uh, the shadow troopers or dark troopers i can't remember what they really call them but these are like third generation advanced versions of the the dark troopers uh, which was originally seen in uh the dark trooper uh, video game i believe either that or shadows of the empire i can't remember but anyways that was really really cool once again drawing from expanded universe uh that one was directed by rob rodriguez very very action-packed episode by the way um Episode number seven, The Believer, directed by uh, Rick Famuyiwa. This was a cool episode. This one has um, uh, this character named Mayfeld, who is a, he, he was a former stormtrooper. And what was really, really cool about this was this one involved a really big battle sequence. They're trying to get these, um, uh, what the heck were, uh, explosive mineral ride right don't right redonium and they needed to uh destroy this uh, uh, uh mining facility this was a really action-packed episode but what was the most cool thing about it was actually seeing a side of the stormtroopers like the i, I guess a more um a, a perspective from the 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 stormtrooper side this the character mayfeld was played by bill burr and which was really really surprising because he's a comedian but you know, it's kind of cool that they put him in because he's a recognizable face. But what I liked about it was that, first of all, it had some really great action, but it showed you an intense moment between Stormtrooper and former Stormtrooper and, and a moment where they could get caught because they're, you know, they're getting, going incognito and they're trying to carry out a mission, but this mission could be thwarted if they don't say the right words, but... Mayfeld is about to screw up the mission because of his personal feelings. So that was a very, very intense moment in which created for a really great battle sequence. So that was really awesome. Uh, number, and um, also what was cool was the working together with the, uh, the female characters. And it was really cool because they provided um, uh, a lot of um, uh, support. You know, a lot of weapons, uh, uh, sniping support to carry out the mission. That was really awesome. Number sixty, um, number eight, episode number eight, the rescue, directed by Peyton Reed, who directed the second episode. This was something else, okay, man. This was okay. This was the best episode of them all. Once again, action packed, but also bringing in a fan favorite character, the fan favorite character of all, Mark Hamill himself, Luke Skywalker. This was a full on surprise, seeing him cut dark troopers to shreds. But not only that, the the um. The mission itself of infiltrating themselves into the, that 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 uh, imperial ship, and then making their way into the uh, into um, the um, you know the, the 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 control room, and trying to uh, rescue Grogu, and then going face to face with Moff Gideon, and then fighting all those dark troopers, very very awesome, and then of course uh, the Jedi Knight himself, Luke Skywalker, cutting dark troopers to shreds. What a great scene. You know, the, um, the, 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 the CG on his face is a little bit off. You know it's very, very off, but it didn't matter. I know that, you know, a lot of people will, will, will think about it a, a much. I mean, they'll think about it a bit, but it didn't even matter. I think that we were so mesmerized by the movements and the fact that he actually exists in this story that blew everything away. It just made everything better. So this was a great episode. And I think that after season one, seeing, you know, the giving us a tease for what the Mandalorian is. And then we go to season two where we bring in all these Easter eggs. So many Easter eggs from the expanded universe and, of course, the original trilogy. And bringing it all together, that was the best thing about it. That was so exciting to show that everything's all connected i mean we know everything's connected i mean even though this this is the story of the mandalorian which kind of veers off 
from the Skywalker Saga, I sprayed everywhere, <laughs> the Skywalker Saga, we still get to see a lot of how it's connected. So very, very awesome. Grogu went off with, with Luke Skywalker. So what are we going to see in season three? I hope we see some more familiar characters. Um, I wonder if he's going to encounter Han Solo, played by um, uh, uh, Alden Ehrenreich. I wonder if they're going to do that. That would be pretty cool. Um, actually, that wouldn't make any sense <laughs> because, because that's a younger Han Solo. Yeah, why would that even happen? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I'm just going off. Um, so those are my thoughts about um, The Mandalorian Season 2. Like, I want to end off by saying that this season was very, very progressive. Like, they saved the best for last. The first two episodes, I wasn't too crazy about. They're still good episodes, but they were... I guess they were the less story-driven. It was just about, you know, okay, we, we are kind of stuck in a rut. We have to get ourselves out. I won't give you this part... This thing, this MacGuffin that is part of the story unless you do this thing for me. It's kind of like a... A side quest like in a video game you can't get to point a or point b unless you you finish the mission for point a 2.0 you know what i'm saying like you have to finish the side quest first before you can advance to the next level so that's what episodes one and two of season two felt like and then it was only when we got to episodes three onwards that's when the story really really picked up so um yeah very very exciting but I'm really looking forward to season three. Like this is the best thing to happen to Star Wars. And it really showed me how much I am so connected the most with the original trilogy. Rogue One, Solo. Like these films are complete, directly connected with the original trilogy. And then we have The Mandalorian. Like the prequels, while I enjoy them and the sequels, I really, really enjoy them as well. They feel the most disconnected. And therefore I have the most connection and, and, and love for for things like the Mandalorian, Rogue One, and Solo, because they're, like I said, connected with the original trilogy. And um, that's what I grew up with. Anyways, that's all I gotta say in this review. I just wanted to provide with you my thoughts about uh, the Mandalorian season two, and I'm looking forward to The Book of Boba Fett, which comes out, I believe, in December. All right, there you have it. My name is Alex. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.